Hello there, geographers, and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today, we're going to be looking at the different political, economic, and cultural effects of migration. As always, remember, if you find value in these topic review videos, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other resources in the description of this video. Migration has a variety of different effects on a society. We can look at historical events, such as the Holocaust, which forced thousands of Jews to emigrate from Germany to different countries around the world. This forced migration not only reshaped the demographic in Germany and much of Europe forever, but also impacted places such as the Middle East, as many of the Jewish refugees fled to the British Mandate of Palestine, which eventually became Israel and Palestine. This is just one example of how the migration of people in the past has shaped the world in which we live. Speaking of refugees, we can look at the political effects of migration today and analyze how citizens of a country and governments view and treat asylum seekers and refugees. Certain governments may restrict certain migrant groups such as refugees, while other countries may be more accepting. Traditionally, governments base their immigration policies around their economic needs, their national security priorities, and also their country's cultural values. If a country grants an individual asylum, we can look to see how they help the migrants succeed in their new country. What systems does the country have in place to help transition the migrants? And how do citizens of the country treat the new migrants? Oftentimes, a country's immigration and migration policies become heated debates in a country. Many countries today have debates over the amount of immigrants they should allow into the country, how the country should handle unauthorized migrants, how to enforce the country's borders, what services the country should provide migrants and immigrant groups, and what immigrants should be allowed into the country in the first place. Individuals who want to reduce the number of immigrants coming into a country will often be in favor of immigration quotas, which limit the amount of immigrants coming into the country. If we look back in history, we can see how immigration policies change over time and how they shape the demographics of a country. For example, in 1882, the United States had an anti-immigrant sentiment and passed the Chinese Exclusion Act, which restricted immigration to the United States. Economically, we can see that countries that have more immigrants often see an increase in their economic output. New immigrants create new businesses, help fill gaps in the workforce, and bring new ideas into society. Now, countries that do not have as much to offer their citizens might experience brain drain, which is when the skilled labor leaves the geographic area in favor of another area that offers more opportunity. This can put a strain on the economy, as society may no longer have the talent that it needs to expand the economy. When countries see more migrants entering the country, they gain access to a larger and more diverse workforce, which can lead to new innovations and more production, but at the same time will also make the job market more competitive, which may reduce the bargaining power of the worker, making it more difficult for individuals to get a job. We may also see immigrants take jobs away from individuals who have been previously living in the country. But if we connect back to the demographic transition model, we can see that countries that are in stage four of the model may end up relying on immigration to help stabilize their shrinking growth rate. If a country restricts immigrants from coming in and does not see their TFR remain above the replacement rate, they may have a shortage of workers and won't be able to produce all of the products that they need. Some countries that have a shrinking population and strict immigration policies may rely on guest workers to help fill the gaps in their economy. Remember, guest workers are migrants who temporarily migrate to a new country for work or for educational reasons. Oftentimes, these migrants may send money back to their home country to help support their family. Now, if we shift our conversation over to cultural effects, we can see that places that accept new migrants will see new foods, music, clothes, and other goods become part of their society. As more migrants enter the country, we often see the cultural diversity of the country increase. But at the same time, we may also see anti-immigrant or refugee sentiment develop. This often happens when individuals are worried about losing certain aspects of their life culture, or unique cultural landscape. It may also happen if individuals are worried about losing their job to migrants. Sometimes political policies can influence the cultural diversity of a country. Policies that revolve around family reunification or policies such as the diversity lottery in the United States allow for more people from certain countries around the world to enter the country. This may influence which people are allowed to immigrate to the country and shift the country's demographic. All right, and there you have it. That was a quick overview of different effects of migration. Now, congratulations, you just finished unit two of AP Human Geography, but now comes the time to practice what you've learned. When you're done, don't forget to also check out my unit two summary video that covers all the major concepts that you need to know before your unit test or the AP exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching.
watching and I'll see you next time online.